Bye Builder here. I just want to talk to you today about syncing a geth or running a geth uh, Ethereum node on an Ethereum test network. Uh, in this case, Rinkaby test network on a external drive. So running geth onto an external drive to sync with the Rinkaby test network is what we'll be talking about today. Yes, it is totally possible and yes it would be better with an ssd however i have an hdd and it works and it frees up some space on my macbook air so if you're like me you have a macbook air you might have some limited resources you're just trying to run a node and you know test out some contracts on the uh any whatever test network uh downloading all of the blockchain is time consuming right and it's also very space consuming so right now it's like 100 90 gigabytes or something like that something ridiculous and if you don't want to dedicate that kind of storage on your own hard drive on your macbook air whatever limited capacity computer you might have like a chromebook you can still sync a geth node onto an external drive so let's talk about how to do that it's pretty simple uh, you have to specify the path which we'll talk about and we'll take a look at in a session and then you have to um, of course sync it with all the correct uh, terminology and commands uh, to sync geth uh, on your machine and we're doing all this in a terminal I have a Mac so if you have a Windows machine there might be a different tutorial out there sorry I haven't tried it yet on a Windows machine I'm sure it works fairly similar uh, also if you have a Mac one prerequisite for this would be to install geth obviously um, and so you can use uh, you know uh, uh, homebrew if you would like if that's that's what you use or you can use any any kind of other way to install geth they have a pretty simple tutorial guide which I'll show you in just a moment um, so that's that's one prerequisite and also I'm gonna be using a tmux session so if you don't know what tmux is you know some extra credit for you I learned uh, all this stuff just by trial and error from watching uh, DAP University actually so uh, he, he didn't go too much in the specifics but I wanted to fill in a little bit uh, because I wanted to learn about uh, developing uh, in a local environment uh, and deploying onto the Ethereum testnet so uh, shout out to DAP University thank you so much for everything that you've showed me so far and let's let's get started let's get right into it oh last prerequisite connect your hard drive <laughs> your external hard drive so I've already got my connected just so you know Okay, so uh, here are the resources I mentioned. I want to just take a look at. Can you start with Tmux? It's how you install it. This is what I'm going to be using, just in case you're interested. I'm, I use Brew Install Tmux, and it tells you how to do it um, and and how to open a new pane and things like that. I'm going to name a new session, and here's uh, Geth or Go Ethereum uh, in long form, and how to install it. Go up to the install, and I used via Homebrew. So here you go. Here it is. Here's how I installed Geth. And then it tells you the docs on how to use it. Uh, you know, you can for Windows and everything else. But using geth shows you the docs, all the commands that I'm going to go through. Uh, you can type geth help. Uh, you can see geth attach here. I'm going to use attach. I'm also going to use uh, the data directory um, and specify the path. You can use sync mode if you want. Here's the different uh, network flags you can use, right? Um, to specify where the directory is, uh, you know, you could serve, run the light node if you want. I'm going to use cache value to speed things up a little bit. I'm going to allow insecure unlock because that's what we needed for this project um, to transfer some ETH via the console uh, to an account that I created, which you'll see in a minute. Um, we're going to specify RPC and RPC API flags, which should be changed actually, but I'm just going to use it like as it is right now to specify that. Uh, my way of attaching to the geth node. So here we go. Okay, so I already opened a tmux session and if you're curious about that you can take a look at tmux um, and those docs and so here it is. Uh, I've already split the panes uh, and you can see okay so there's tmux yada yada. Uh, control B is actually you hit control B and then release it and then press whatever command comes next. Right, so like semicolon as you just saw there to switch between the two different panes if you're new to tmux. So I'm going to type out, I'm going to specify uh, geth, I'm going to run geth on the Rinkaby test network, uh, dash dash, I'm going to use the cache flag to speed things up ever so slightly. I'm going to allow this insecure unlock because again for this project I am going to uh, need to transfer some ETH through uh, the console to a, uh, an account that I created here. 
I'm going to specify the RPC in, as some um, RPC API uh, exposure here. So to like personal and ETH and, and yada yada. So this is just what I want some exposure to be towards. All right. And then I am going to specify the data directory and now this is where you specify and and the order of specification matters here where you put data to your flag but um, you specify the external hard drive so here's the directory to or the path to my external hard drive where we're going to store the chain data so instead of storing it on my um, uh, default IPC path for Mac is this instead of storing it here where it takes up space on my hard drive I'm storing it on the external hard drive with um, that uh, data to your flag, but by specifying the IPC path to be end and get IPC, IPC, and I'll type this out here in a minute, I'm going to allow for a connection to uh, the geth console in this other uh, uh, Tmux window here. So you'll see that in just a minute. I'm gonna switch. Uh, okay, so just switched here, uh, says to switch panes, just hit and release control B and then hit the uh, semicolon. And then here's the path that I specified. So I'm just gonna type it out. I'm not actually gonna run another node here, but I typed out geth, rinkity flag, the cache 2048 to speed things up. And then I went to allow insecure unlock for this very project because I need to transfer some Ethereum to the console to a account that I created. Uh, had the RPC flag here, the RPC API, some things that I want to explode, expose this to. Um, no spaces here, as you see. So I see some people put in the quotation marks, some people don't. I don't think it really matters. Um, and then the data directory again specifies a path to the external drive. So this is how I am syncing uh, the chain data onto my external drive instead of onto the um, hard drive of my computer and this that path will be different for everybody so this is just what mine's named then the IPC path allows me to continue to attach the geth console which you'll see in just a moment and this is the default path okay so let's attach the geth console with geth attach and it's successful all right so you see my node running one pane I'm gonna use e-syncing in the other to find out where I am Right, it's not too slow. It's already sinking, uh, you know, slowly. Blocks are appearing. Um, uh, I have peers, and yeah. So that's it. Just so you know, here is my uh, external hard drive listed. This is how I got the path. Just in case you're wondering, this is uh, so it's going to be specific to you. Whatever you name the volume, right, right there. Uh, and so now I'm syncing my chain data to my external hard drive. Neat. All right. If I go back to the console cleared up here a little bit, you can uh, see that we are making some progress. So I know they say it's pretty uh, slow. I won't show you that yet, uh, but there it is. We are making more progress. If you take a look at the current block and you can just keep hitting up arrow and then enter up arrow and then enter to get these e-syncing. You can see your uh, known states, pulled states, you know, the starting block at the very bottom there each time. And uh, that's how you know you're syncing. It's when it reads out ETH uh, or ETH syncing reads out false, then uh, you know you're done, and it's all synced. All right, here is my um, path the, where I'm storing the data, and you can see that there is that's where the chain data is going to end up. So then a couple of default values are are created, like including your key store. Another way to see this is if you open up your disk utility GUI and instead of storing stuff here on my H hard drive uh, for my Mac, uh, you can see my portable media here. Files is the uh, path and, and this you'll see increasing. So if you want to check that out yourself.